Hey, y'all, this is Tony Paradis with Food and Fitness. I'm a licensed sports dietitian and personal trainer. Check out my website. I'm going to link that down below at foodandfitnessonline.com. Today I'm talking about a subject very near and dear to my heart, uh, muscle building, especially for cycling. So I'm going to talk about uh, the different types of muscles that you can build, protocols, your muscular potential, and finally how to set that up uh, during a training season to get the most bang for your buck. So let's zoom in to the whiteboard of science, and let's talk about how to make those muscle gains. All right, so if you want to build muscle for cycling, the first thing that you need to understand it is that there are different types of muscle fibers, which are going to give you different types of benefits. Um, as a well-rounded athlete, you want to pay some attention during the year building all of these, but let's look at these individually. So, you know, here I have my uh, muscle, and we can see that it is a made up of strands. And these strands uh, connect with each other, and they contract by pulling themselves in. And that's how a muscle fiber contracts. So muscle fibers are uh, built into different categories. So you have your number one is your type 1 muscle fiber, which is also known as your slow twitch, and this is your endurance muscle. Uh, this muscle has a lot of mitochondria in it, which is what is used for aerobic respiration. In other words, getting oxygen to the muscle, and that's what we use in uh, where the term aerobics comes for, for like aerobic endurance, which is going to be uh, a very big part of cycling. So cyclists, if they have uh, big legs, a lot of that is going to be uh, the slow twitch muscle fibers, unless they're a sprinter. Then we get into your fast twitch. You have two types of fast twitch, type A and type B. There's actually more different types of muscle, but for the scope of today's conversation, uh, type A is going to be your fast twitch mix. This is kind of like a medium in between the two, where it has some endurance properties to it, but also has uh, some of the fast twitch properties to it. Uh, as well. And then your type 2B is going to be uh, your classical fast twitch, kind of what we think of when we think of strength and power. So all of these muscle fibers uh, come together to make up the muscle, and they adapt differently, and they respond differently to different types of stimulus, different types of training. So let's look at the training protocol uh, in order to hypertrophy, in order in other words, build these different types of muscle. So your type, your type 1 muscle, your slow twitch, are going to be built, if we're using uh, weightlifting as a standard for these, in the 12 to 20 and even more repetition range. So your high repetition range, usually your shorter rest, uh, is going to be a way to hypertrophy those types of muscles in the weight room. Also looking at uh, ways to hypertrophy them with cycling, <laughs> excuse me, uh, would be your endurance rides. So your slow, steady, long rides, hypertrophy of the slow twitch muscle, building the slow twitch muscle. Uh, your type 2A is going to be built uh, generally with the 8 to 12 repetition range. This is a nice medium repetition range. 8 to 12 repetitions, meaning between 8 and 12 repetitions, you will hit at or very close to uh, muscular failure in the gym. Uh, this is also going to come from different types of cycling, so that's going to be mixed. And then your type 2B, uh, your classical fat, very fast twitch muscle fibers. Uh, this comes from between 1 and 5 reps. Generally, 1 to 3 reps is where you're going to use for power, for something like Olympic lifting. And then 3 to 5 reps is where you're going to build most of your strength. Uh, from a cycling standpoint, this is where sprints are going to come into play uh, to build those. So, which type of muscle fibers should you uh, build if you're a cyclist? Well, you should build all of these types of muscle fibers. And you should do this by not only uh, riding on the bike, but also by putting your time in time in, in the weight room. Um, now, what we want to do also is... After you've had some years as a cyclist, or let's say you're an advanced cyclist and you're watching this, uh, of course you want to specialize. So if you're a sprinter, you're going to spend a lot of your time building up the fast twitch muscles. Um, if you're an endurance rider, you're not going to spend 
you know, six months out of the year with heavy lifting in the weight room, doing a lot of sprints. Obviously, your specialization is going to be reflective in your type of training. But if you're the kind of cyclist that likes to do the uh, criterium racing, that does the road racing, uh, maybe even gets uh, inside for track racing, um, you're going to want to spend some time building each of these types of muscle fibers. Now, this is also not, uh, these are not exclusive categories. So, there is no such thing as a pure slow twitch or a pure fast twitch muscle fibers. It's like a gradient, okay? So, not, so training in one to five reps is still going to train different types of muscle fibers depending on how your workout regimen goes, but this is just going to be the emphasis, okay, of, of, uh, where your training protocol is going to be. Okay, let's talk about uh, muscle building potential. And uh, this is going to be built for males. For females, you're looking at about half of the rate of muscular growth. Uh, this is due to um, hormones, uh, primarily testosterone production in, in the male body. And as we know, uh, testosterone is an anabolic hormone, okay, made in the body. So in your first year of training, uh, men, you're going to be able to build two pounds of muscle per month, and this is assuming that you have an optimal training and nutrition program set up for you. Uh, most of the time, unless you're working with somebody who's very, uh, a very advanced coach and and a dietitian, um, just sort of accidentally stumbling upon an optimal nutrition and training program isn't going to happen for you. So th these are built on optimal. Uh, numbers with observations of athletes. Uh, year two in training, that's going to be cut in half, and, and in year three, that's going to be cut in half. Year four, five, six, you're really looking at negligible uh, numbers, considering that that person has uh, put due diligence in building and maintaining the muscle fiber. For females, you're looking at one pound per month, half a pound, and a quarter pound in the first one, two, and three years of training, and that's just how it is. Okay, so let's look down here and at an optimal ratio, so this is your muscle building potential in an absolute value in the muscle building ratio. Let's say that you're doing everything right and eating in a surplus of calories. You can build about, this is different for everybody, but I'm giving you guys a uh, kind of a ballpark range here. You can build about a one-to-one -one muscle to fat gain ratio. So anytime you do build muscle, you are going to put on some fat, and that's that's just simply a fact. Now, whether you have brief periods of fat loss or whatever you want to do, okay, we're, we're going to talk about that, but optimal one-to-one -one muscle to fat gain. And, you know, I'm going to take a minute here to pick on, you know, supplement companies and, and testimonials and things like that. If somebody tells you that they have built, you know, 15 pounds of muscle in two months or, you know, they've built, 20 pounds of muscle in three months, something like that. Okay, look at these charts, and let me tell you, this person is either lying, trying to sell you something, uh, misunderstanding of the of, of how muscle works, uh, or they had a, a a measurement that was inaccurate when they measured their body composition, or perhaps they're even using anabolic steroids. But for a natural athlete, one-to-one -one muscle to fat gain, and two-one or half pound a month uh, for men. So, sorry guys, there is no way to build 15 pounds of muscle in a month, no matter how hard you train. Okay, now let's finally look at, we know the muscle fibers, uh, basic training protocol for each of those, and kind of the rep range, uh, muscle building potential, but how do we put this together in terms of, uh, cycling, because the title of today's presentation is How to Build Muscle for Cycling. This all comes together when we're looking at the timeline of the off-season and the racing season. So what I recommend is that you break these, um, you break off your off-season into two phases. So during the off-season, this is the time to both build muscle and for fat loss. The reason we're not doing this during the racing season is because when you lose fat, you're also um, having a lower energy. You increase your risk of overtraining. And this is where your most intense uh, training and racing is going to occur. We certainly don't want to compromise that 
with a different goal. Um, building, f- losing fat is not the same as performance nutrition. Okay. So, anyways, I digress. In the off season, in your first phase, you're going to use that to build your muscle. Okay. So you're going to be eating in a caloric surplus. So this is going to be reflective of how many years you've been training. And for most of you, um, unless you've just really been hammering it in the gym, I'm going to consider you as a one, possibly two year of training, even though if you've been biking longer or something like that, that's where you're going to categorize yourself. So let's say that you can build two pounds per month. Okay, That's a half a pound of muscle per week, which means that, remember, with the one-to-one uh, muscle-to-fat ratio, that means that if I gain one pound per week, that would be half a pound of muscle and half a pound of fat. Okay, So that's the kind of rate of weight gain that I'm going to be looking at. So if I want to gain my optimal half pound of muscle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to gain one pound a week, therefore increasing off my maintenance calorie levels uh, 500 calories a day, which will equal one pound of weight gain per week. Okay. So during the first half of your on-season training, off-season training rather, we're going to focus on building. So let's say we have a six-month off-season, just for simplicity of math. The first three months, maybe even four months, I'm going to focus on building at a rate that's not too fast, but not too slow, kind of using this as a guideline. So if, if you're a beginner, about a pound a week is just plenty fine. Okay, so once I've built up enough muscle or once uh, my timeline is coming to an end, we're going to focus on phase two, which is our fat loss nutrition. And this is where we're going to lose fat, but try to preserve as, mu- as much muscle as possible. And with an endurance athlete and um, as you get leaner, you do run the risk of losing some muscle. But it's at a much favorable proportion than the rate of muscle to fat gain. So for every four pounds of fat you may lose, you may lose a pound of muscle. Um, it, It really just depends. But I'm going to give that to you guys as just a general rule of thumb. So let's say that I spend the off-season gaining uh, 20 pounds, okay? If I want to lose um, the fat, let's say I gain 20 pounds and 10 of those pounds are muscle, okay? So I'm going to have to lose maybe a couple pounds of muscle by the time I try to shave off those extra 10 pounds. So at a 1 to 4 ratio, we're looking at 2 pounds of muscle for every 8 pounds of fat loss, so maybe a two, maybe a three pound uh, muscle loss. We've still built and maintained seven pounds of muscle. Okay, So we have a very favorable training adaptation and we didn't gain any extra fat when we're looking at the entire scope of this. And then during the racing season, this is where you're going to want to maintain your muscle. Okay, uh, We want to maintain because if we build any more muscle, we're going to be building uh, fat along with that. And that's not what we want during the racing season. And also, we don't want to lose any more weight because uh, that is a contradiction, or rather that weight loss nutrition is the opposite of performance nutrition. When you performance nutrition, you want to be eating adequately so you can recover, and we're not trying to be in a catabolic state. So, guys, this was my presentation on how to build muscle for cycling with the muscle fibers. We talked about training protocol. Uh, your muscular potential, and also the timeline in uh, how long I like to take. So my name is Tony Paradis. I'm a licensed sports dietitian uh, in Flower Mound with food and fitness, also personal trainer. So know a thing or two about the nutrition and the uh, training aspect of how to build muscle, especially for cycling. So guys, please like this video, please share this, and check out my website down below in the comments at Food and Fitness Online. And also check out my other videos on uh, nutrition and cycling, which I'll link here within, uh, down below. And uh, this will be one of many videos in a a video series I'm going to be making for cyclists. Thanks again, and uh, stay tuned.